My guest today, Deborah Shambora, was charged. A 1,200 pound horse charged her, smashed her body, and she had an encounter with God. And when she came back, she had supernatural vision. She can see in the invisible world. But before we get to that, I have a question for you. Uh, according to the New Testament, there were 3,000 Jewish people that came to know Jesus in a couple of paragraphs, literally. What did these 3,000 Jewish people do? There were no churches, no steeples, no Sunday schools, uh, no congregations, nothing. What they did is they had house congregations. Now, they didn't know a whole lot. They didn't even have the New Testament by that point. They just had the Old Testament. But what they knew was intimacy with God. What they knew was mishpacha. That's a Hebrew word, family. It would, they knew to have an extended family, and they knew that Jesus was real, and they knew how to have intimacy with one another and intimacy with God. And I believe that we are coming into that time again. What's it going to take? It's going to take an outpouring of God's Spirit where people are going to know intimacy with God. And the system that we have today that we call church, it's the best that we have, and God is using it. But you, have you ever thought there must be something more? I believe before the Messiah returns, we're going to have the same ingredients that the first church had and even greater. Uh, Deborah, we're going to find out the most amazing thing in your life, but you are involved in a house congregation. Yes. What is that like? It's a place where we can grow together with the Lord. It's a place where we can be family. It's a place where the Lord speaks to each one of us individually rather than speaking through one pastor. And as we come together, we all have a piece of what I call the puzzle. When we get the puzzle together, God has spoken something that, um, that directs us, guides us, reveals something to us, and we move on to the next thing. And isn't it exciting when you see a perfect tapestry mm -hmm. of it's unplanned, but yet the yes. Spirit of God plans that meeting. Mm -hmm. I believe the Spirit of God even planned that you watch this and you are in running form for the next, for the greatest, and perhaps last move of God's Spirit on planet Earth and then comes the Messiah. We're going to be right back and find out about this supernatural sight that Deborah was given. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. What happens when a 1,200-pound horse comes charging at you, tramples you nonstop. <laughs> well, number one, a lot of your organs are crushed and bones are crushed. Deborah Shambor, did it happen so fast that you couldn't even think about it? Or what was going on inside of you when you saw the horse, horse charging you and starting to trample you? Well, fortunately, I was facing the other direction. She hit me from behind. Oh, blindsided so, you. <laughs> so it was actually pretty good. All of a sudden, I just felt like you'd feel, I guess, if you were hit by a truck. It was just this incredible impact. And um, that's all I really felt. But what I find fascinating is uh, once she came to her senses, she was encased in supernatural peace. Explain that. I don't know if you can explain supernatural peace, but I felt like I was resting in the hand of God, that, that He had me completely covered. And I had praise songs, I had songs, just worship songs going through my head. And they were giving me this sense of complete peace. And I knew I was in pain, but the pain wasn't the, the issue. The issue was that this peace was so overwhelming. But you realized that you were you were <laughs> severely injured, yes. so you told your daughter to mm -hmm. uh, to call an what? ambulance. And then what happened? Mm -hmm. And then the ambulance came, and I was so at peace and so uh, in that place with the Lord. They didn't even think I was hurt, so they put me in the ambulance and they took me to the hospital and and kept me in the emergency room for about seven or eight hours. And they thought I wasn't hurt. They were going to send me home. 
Uh, then they got back some test results and they realized that I was wounded. They called it a level one trauma. And they said I need to go to another hospital, but I wasn't well enough to go to another hospital, so they had to keep me there. So I went into intensive care that day, that evening. But they thought I was fine. And I know they thought I was fine because the peace of God was palpable around me. It was so, it was so thick. That, and I was just kind of laughing. And I was in pain, but not to the extent that I should have been. Uh, bottom line, what was wrong with you? Um, the horse crushed all of my ribs on the left side. And then she crushed my spleen, my liver, my kidney, um, part of my esophagus. Uh, I think that's all. I mean, if there's anything else over there, she crushed that too. And, and then when, I, <laughs> when she uh, hit me with such force and then I hit the ground, they feel that that ruptured the corneas in both of my eyes. Uh, you, you were a mess. You yeah. died. <laughs> I did. Tell, I me, did. tell me that experience. Well, I was um, in intensive care that night and uh, all of a sudden, I kind of awoke. I, I guess I was sleeping and I kind of awoke and I realized that the doctors and nurses were all around and there was this big flurry of activity going around. But I didn't see it from below like you would look up at doctors and nurses. It was like I was seeing it from outside of myself. And so I was watching what was happening and I heard everything that they were saying and they were back and forth trying to get this done and that done. And then I looked and I saw the Lord. I saw the Father. I saw Father God. And I looked at him and I said, oh, I'm going to die. I mean, it was kind of this revelation. All of a sudden you think, this doesn't seem right. I, I think I'm going to die. And I wasn't ready to die. Now, he didn't answer me when I said that, but I wasn't ready to die. So I said, I'm not ready to go because I have a daughter and my daughter is very important to me and I've raised her by myself and I really would like to stay and finish raising her. Uh, and I don't think there's anybody else who can do a better job than me. <laughs> uh, you're a real negotiator, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was at the time. And so all of a sudden the Lord spoke and he said, your daughter was mine before she was yours and I gave you to her. And if don't you think I can give someone else and I can provide for her after you're gone? And it was such a stark reality check. It was, yes, you can. And it isn't about me and what I can do and what I can give. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm ready to go then. Uh, I woke up the next morning on my way to surgery. So I and, didn't die. <laughs> and so over a period of time you recovered, but then they found out, as you said, that your corneas were crushed. Right. And uh, you had, uh, Sir, uh, what, what was your vision like when there were, what, did you, what could you see, anything? The easiest way to describe it, there was a lot of scar tissue on the corneas. Mm -hmm. Everywhere they ruptured, they healed back with a thick scar tissue. So I could see multiple images. So they felt like it was about 16 images in each eye, over, kind of overlapping. Okay, but you had a corneal surgery, mm -hmm. a, a transplant, transplant on mm -hmm. one eye, and then you put a contact on. Mm -hmm. So in one eye, you obviously can see me. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then you went to Africa and there was a, a man that prayed for the sick mm -hmm. and he prayed for you. Yes. Uh, tell me about that. He prayed for my vision. Uh, and for my eyes, because I have 2060 in the right eye with my contact lens, and the left eye is 2300. It's really mm -hmm. not very measurable. So he prayed, and I could see the same when he was finished, but I felt the power of the Lord all over him. And then um, the next day, I woke up and I went to, back to church. I, we were ministering in a church. Were you in real disappointed that you couldn't see better? You know, I, I wasn't. I thought it would, might happen, but I wasn't really that disappointed because I was just enjoying being with the Lord and being alive. Okay, so you went to the so church. So I went to the church, and when I walked in the church, all of a sudden I started seeing in the spirit realm, and I, I saw everything that was going on in, with the angelic and with the demonic, and what the angels were doing and how they were moving. So you had vision, but a different type. She had vision in the invisible world. Mm -hmm. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Deborah Shambora, and Deborah was trampled on, crushed by a 1,200 pound horse. And uh, over a period of time, she recovered, except for her vision. Uh, she uh, had both corneas crushed. She had surgery in one eye. Uh, 
cornea replacement, uh, puts on a contact lens and you can see uh, well enough to get around with one eye. She goes to Africa, there's a man that prays for the sick, he prays for her, nothing happens. She's just grateful to God that she's alive, uh, but she still cannot see any better. She goes to church the next morning and tell me what you saw with your eyes, Deborah. I saw a lot of angelic activity. I saw angels moving different places, doing different activities, the, um, coming up and down the aisles, going up to people, individual people, and doing certain things. Um, and then I saw the demonic realm kind of peering in and looking on to see what was happening. And this went on for about two and a half hours. It was two it and was, a half hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yes. could actually, it's like the veil mm -hmm. came off mm -hmm. and you could see what's going on in the invisible. It was like going to the movies <laughs> and you could just see everything that was happening. So, of course, I was a little bit um, upset. I thought, what is this? You know, <laughs> way. And I realized that it was just a gift from the Lord that instead of getting natural vision, the Lord said, no, you can wait for that. And I do still believe in healing in the natural vision. But the Lord said, um, for right now, I'm going to give you a clear spiritual vision. Okay. So you leave the church after this two and a half hour uh, having the spiritual scales come off of your right. eyes. And did it continue when you left the building? It did. It Tell continued. Me about that. Um, it continued. And I was looking in the city that I was ministering in in Africa, and they ride a lot of motorbikes there. And mm -hmm. I could see, I could see angels and or demons riding with the people on the motorbikes. And it was just almost overwhelming. It got to the point where I just closed my eyes and I said, Lord, I, I don't know if I can do this, see all this in the spirit and, and still see in the natural. So the Lord over a period of time taught me how to manage both sites at the same time. My less than perfect uh, physical vision and then the spiritual vision that's fairly clear. How does God use you with this gift to help other people in what ways? Or give me an exact example. Okay, well, just recently I was in California ministering and I was standing in the back of the building and I could see a woman directly in front of me and she had her hands on her head and her head was in her lap and her husband was just stroking her uh, jacket. And the Lord said to me, that woman has a terrible migraine headache, but it's an attack of the enemy and he doesn't want her to hear what's going to be spoken today. So I said, okay, Lord, what would you have me do? Would you have me do anything? And he said, start interceding and praying for her. So I did. And then I saw an angel come down the aisle and he was carrying a pitcher and he walked over to her and he just poured kind of a, a oily, watery substance on her that I've seen before, an anointing. And he poured that on her and within about 30 seconds, she just sat straight up in her chair and she looked and she was totally involved in the rest of the service and felt great, I could tell. I never went up and asked her about it or told her about it because the Lord didn't say I should. But I can see things like that happening and then I can release that angel to go ahead and minister uh, to you her. You told me that uh, if you press into God, mm -hmm. you can see the heart of someone and many times find the root yes. that allows the uh, in spirit of infirmity to hold on to that person. Yes. What do you really see? Well, it, I've seen everything from um, a heart that has a, a great big gash out of it as if it were totally wounded. I've seen a heart that has a, a wound, but that wound is open and it's not healing. I've seen where people put band-aids on their own hearts and they try to heal themselves. And I've seen hearts that are totally blackened just by sin and, um, and the oppression of the enemy. So I've seen all different kinds of hearts. Uh, you think that's something. She's sitting in a, in a congregation and a man sits next to her. He wasn't supposed to be there. And then he tells you something. What did he tell you? Well, I was really busy because I was getting ready to minister and I was going to go up and minister on the stage. And so I was, I was not paying attention to this gentleman. But he looked at me and he said, you can go anywhere in the heavenlies you want. And so I kind of ignored him a little. I said, thank you. And I kept doing what I was doing, preparing for my own speaking engagement. And then uh, right before I got up, he said to me again, he looked me right in the eyes and he said, anywhere in the heavenlies you, you want to go, you can go at any time. And I said, okay. And I felt that, that he was an angel, that he had just taken on human form for that moment. So I grabbed my daughter and I said, take a picture of me and this person 
then after the service, I went around and tried to find that gentleman, and he was nowhere to be seen. And do you no believe he was an angel? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sure he was an angel yes. too. But better question than that mm -hmm. is, What's I assume you have been to heaven. Yes. What's it like? Um, does it take, is it a long trip? How long no. does it take you to get there? It's, it's the blink of an eye. And maybe it's a long trip in human terms, but it's the blink of an eye. You just, you walk into the heavenly places. There, there's not a dimension or a time in heaven. So you can just walk into the heavenly places, but there are definite places in heaven. There's a throne room, uh, there's a tabernacle. Tell me your two mm -hmm. favorite things you do when you go to heaven. Well, my favorite thing to do is I um, go in and pray with Jesus because that's what Jesus has been doing for the last 2,000 years. He's up there praying for us and praying for the earth. So I go in and I say, I'd like to pray with you in the same way you would go in and pray with anyone. And so you pray for people on earth mm -hmm. from heaven, mm -hmm. just like Jesus is doing. Mm -hmm. I what's pray the, with him. What's the mm -hmm. second thing? You and love? the second thing is um, uh, I, I like to walk on the sea of glass. <laughs> you like to, what's the, why do you like it? Um, I, it's just a very peaceful, very um, joyful place. Heaven is a place where everyone's busy. The angels are all very busy. They all have tasks and duties, and people come and go in there for their own, whatever God's reason is. Is there anything unusual mm -hmm. going on in heaven at this moment? Does it look uh, like things are speeding up? Definitely, definitely the time frame is speeding up. And definitely more things are being revealed now than I believe have ever been revealed in the past. You know what intrigues me? Sometimes you'll be in a congregation praying and you'll see angels come, you told me, mm -hmm. with gifts to explain that. Yes, they'll come with gifts. Sometimes they're actually packaged like presents. And, uh, sort of like our one new man kit? Yes, yeah, like that, just like that. <laughs> and sometimes it'll be a sword or it'll be a weapon of some kind or it'll be a mantle, a coat um, or a crown. And the angels will come ready to deliver that from the Father to a specific person. And the person in authority over that meeting then releases the angels and says, okay, go ahead. And the angel will then give it to the person. Or sometimes the angel actually has given it to me and then I've given it to the person. Um, that, that just sounds so phenomenal, <laughs> but I believe that you're a forerunner of what is going to be happening. And these mm -hmm. one new man house congregations? Yes. I believe are going to be loaded with angelic activity. I, I think everyone is supposed to do this. Would you pray for everyone to get hungry and depressed yes. in right now? Yes. Pray for them so that they can move in these realms? Yes, I would. Father, we just love you today and we ask you to, to touch every person who's watching this broadcast with a hunger and a thirst deep in their spirit for you, for the deeper things. They want to go to heaven too, Lord. They want to see all this. Release it into their lives. I ask you, Lord, that they would, they, would be, they would believe what it is that you're doing, not just because it's in me, but because only you could do something like this. I pray that all eyes and all glory would be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Real quick, for mm -hmm. the Spirit, the scales to be removed to mm -hmm. be able to see in the spirit like you. Mm -hmm. Pray that. Well, you know, I can pray it, Sid, but the truth is I really believe that it, the key to doing this is time spent in commune with God. It isn't like an anointing. What it is is... Okay, I pray mm -hmm. in Yeshua's name that you hunger to yes. spend time yes. with God yes. and that you experience this vision. Yes, yes.